This video is part of D3.2 on inheritance, and we'll look at dihybrid crosses, which is higher level content. In this video, we're going to be working with unlinked genes. So genes that are found on different chromosomes. There's a separate video for gene linkage. And since we're working with unlinked genes, we really need to be thinking about segregation and independent assortment. Segregation means separation. So the separation of alleles during meiosis. And this is related to Mendel's law of independent assortment. So this is segregation of alleles in a way that the inheritance of one does not influence the other. So for example, if there is a gene on this chromosome, the inheritance of the alleles for that gene isn't affected by how genes or alleles are inherited from this other chromosome. And this is related to random orientation in metaphase. Remember, the alignment in metaphase 1 of meiosis um, could look like this, or it could look like this. Both alignments are equally possible. Same goes with alignment and meiosis 2. But you'll notice that these different alignments produce very different combinations of alleles in the gametes, yet all of these are equally possible. So this all leads back to independent assortment. And again, this applies to unlinked genes, which are genes on different chromosomes. If I want to track the inheritance of two unlinked autosomal genes, then I can use what's called a dihybrid cross. So we've been using little cute baby Punnett grids that look just like this, just with four squares on the inside, to track the inheritance of one gene. Dihybrid crosses are going to help us to predict the outcome of two unlinked genes. And it's important that they're autosomal genes, okay? We're not gonna be tracking sex-linked genes using these. So let's say I get a problem that starts off like this. In pea plants, round seeds are dominant over wrinkled seeds and green seeds are dominant over yellow. Well, I'm hearing that there are two traits. There's a trait for seed shape and then another one or another gene for seed color. So I wanna track both of those at the same time and analyze the predicted outcomes. Since there are two genes that I'm looking at, shape and color, I don't want to use one of those little baby Punnett squares. I want to use a dihybrid cross. And now you'll notice instead of four squares, there are 16 squares in a dihybrid cross. So let's use this example, okay? So it's the same example as we just started with. I'm gonna say that round is big R and wrinkled is little r because round is dominant over wrinkled. And notice it's the same gene, so I'm using the same letter, just capital and lowercase. And green is dominant over yellow. So I'm gonna use big G for green and a little g for yellow. Predict the phenotypic ratios that results from crossing two plants that are heterozygous for each trait. Since they are unlinked, I'm going to write it like this. So plant number one is heterozygous for shape and heterozygous for color. Plant number two is also heterozygous for shape and heterozygous for color. The way that I'm writing this is very important. This is very typical of unlinked genes. I just write the genotypes um, for each trait right next to each other. But I can't just put this on my <laughs> Punnett square. Punnett squares are for combinations in gametes. And now these gametes are going to segregate independently. And that means all different combinations are equally likely. So I'm going to figure out the combinations of alleles for the gametes of parent number one. Parent number one could have this big R with the big G. So dominant for shape and dominant for color or it could have the big R with the little g, so dominant for shape and recessive for color, or it could have a little r with a big G, so recessive for shape, dominant, for, whoops, <laughs> Rece what am I doing here? Recessive for shape and dominant for color, or it could have little r, little g, okay, recessive for both shape and color. I'm gonna do that again for my second parent. So big R, big G, okay? It could be big R, little G, and little R, big G, 
and little r, little g. So notice that in my parents, there are two alleles for each trait, yet in the gamete, there's only one allele for each trait. By um, coming up with all of the different combinations and saying that they're equally likely, this is an application of independent assortment. When you fill in your dihybrid cross, write the letters for each trait next to each other. So for example, if I want to simulate the cross between this gamete and this gamete, it's big R, big R, and then big G, big G. So both of those go in here. For the next one, this is dominant for shape for both from both parents, so big R, big R, and then big G, little g, and so on and so forth. So I'd like you to go ahead and fill in your Punnett square. Um, pause this video, fill it in, and then you can check it with mine in just a second. So this is my filled in dihybrid cross. What I need to do next is figure out the possible combinations of these two traits. Remember I have seed shape and seed color. So plants could either be round and green, they could be round and yellow, they could be wrinkled and green, or they could be wrinkled and yellow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through each of these individuals and I'm going to determine what their phenotype is. So this person is round and green. So I'm going to make a tally mark here next to round and green, and I'm going to also cross it off just so I don't forget. This individual here is also round and green, so I'm gonna make another tally mark here. You should do the same, pause this video, figure out how many of each phenotype you have, and then you can check your answer. So I'm getting a final phenotypic ratio of nine to three to three to one. And this is a very classic ratio if you are breeding together two plants that are homozygous for each trait, but I found nine that are round and green, three round and yellow, three wrinkled and green, and one wrinkled and yellow. And so this is how we would use a dihybrid cross for tracking two traits um, involving unlinked autosomal genes.